Right, so here we are with a new project based on the third person template, and this is Unreal Engine 426, although this should all work in like 425, 424, you know, whichever version. Now, what we're going to do in this video is just some setup. We're going to create all the assets that we need, like the behavior tree, the blackboard, the enemy themselves, and don't worry, I'll explain what all of that is. Um, we'll start with the enemy. Now, I'm not going to worry too much about file organization in this. Um, I'm just going to put everything, at least initially, at this, just in the root content folder, and then we'll move things around as we need to. To begin with, let's create the enemy character themselves. So we right click in the content browser, make a new blueprint. It's based on character, and I'm going to call that BP underscore enemy. And then we'll open this and just see what kind of things we need to set up in here. Well, first of all, we need a mesh. So let's set the mesh component to use the skeletal mesh just called SK Mannequin. I mean, you can use another one if you want to, it should work. This is the same one as the player, and we'll color it red just to, so we can see the difference between the player and the enemy. Now to get this line up right, we want to change the, the mesh component's Z location to minus 85, just bring it down to the floor. We want to change the Z rotation to minus 90. And at the moment, it's not animated, but we can use the same animation blueprint that the player is using. Still with the mesh component selected in the animation area, we've got use animation blueprint. Which one do you want to use? And it is third person underscore anim BP. Perfect. So no, it can have idle animations, it can run, it can walk, same as the player. I can technically jump as well, although we're not going to do that in this first, first series. We now need to add what's called an AI perception component. It is down here, add component AI perception. This is a component that lets our character sense other characters, you know, other things in the environment. It can see, it can hear, it can touch things and so on. First of all, we want to add a new sense. So in the AI perception component, in senses config, hit plus, and it will say, what sense do you want? And we're going to say sight. That's the only one we're going to work with in this initially. We'll add sense of sight and then configure that to have sight radius. Now, what works well for this template I've found is a sight radius of 1,500. And let me just try and expand this a bit. And then a lose sight radius of 2,000. So what that means is when we get closer than 1,500 to this enemy, it will be able to see us. And then it won't lose sight of us until we reach 2,000. So if we if it if it sees us, we'll have to run away a little bit further before it loses sight of us. That just makes things a little bit smoother. We want it to be able to detect. Uh, just take all three of these for now: detect enemies, neutrals, and friendlies. And we'll we'll have a look in the debug view in a second to see um, just how far that visual range extends. Now let's color the mesh red just so it looks a bit different to the um, to the player. So what I'm going to do, right click in the content browser and make a new material. And I'm just going to call that material M underscore red. And this is just going to be a dead simple, you know, let, let's just wire the color red into base color and that's it. So I'm going to hold three click, you know, hold three and then left click to get constant three vector. Or you can drag it in from here if you prefer or use the search. I'm going to change that to be the color red. And then wire that into base color and just hit apply. And then that's all we need to do for that material. And that's all we need to do for the materials full stop in this initial series. Okay, so let's select the mesh again. And then in its element zero material slot, we'll change that to M underscore red. Then wait while Unreal Engine thinks about it for a bit. And then we'll have the enemy colored red. Now what we can do, we'll use that debug view actually, just to see how far the AI visual range extends. So if I drop that BP enemy into the level here, and let's just rotate him around to face this way. If we now play the game and run up here, if you want to debug your AI perception, you hit the apostrophe key on your keyboard to get the debug up, and then press four on your number pad, not the top row of numbers, the actual number pad. And that will bring up this. Remember to hit numlock if you've got a keyboard like mine, it won't work. Now this green uh, boundary is the um, the sight radius. So when we're inside that, notice it can see us. And we get this little sphere preview saying, yes, it can see you. And then it won't lose sight of us until we reach this outer this sort of pinkish boundary there. And then it loses sight of us. So that's what those two sight radiuses are. See us, keep tracking us, loses sight of us. Okay. So now let's create a few more assets. We need a AI controller. So an AI controller, it's like the player controller if you've ever used one of those. Just where do we set up the AI's, well, controls basically. 
Um, there's not going to be much in here, which needs a new blueprint. It's going to be based on the class AI controller. And we'll just call this enemy AIC for enemy AI controller. Now we also need a behavior tree. A behavior tree is you find these under artificial intelligence behavior tree. I'm just going to call that enemy BT. The behavior tree is just like a logical hierarchical structure to do with how the AI makes decisions about what to do and then what tasks to actually do. We're going to spend quite a lot of time in this series uh, fiddling with the behavior tree. We also need a blackboard from artificial intelligence blackboard and we'll call that enemy BB. Uh, use your own names. If you think enemy BT and enemy BB are too similar and it's confusing then change them. I've called them that for like behavior tree and blackboard obviously. Uh, what the, the what the blackboard does is it allows us to contain variables which represent the kind of the AI's mind, like what is its current target, where is it heading to, what search location is it going to, what's its next patrol, you know, things like that. So the state, the internal state of the AI's mind, essentially. And you could put things on there like um, how much health does it have if you really wanted to. In fact, we'll do that in later series. Right, now let's start to wire this stuff together, shall we? We need to go into the AI controller, which is this. And we need to tell this AI controller, if we go to the event graph, that when the game starts, so when event begin play runs, which Unreal will run at the start, we need to do something called a run behavior tree. And they can probably guess which behavior tree we're going to tell it to run. It's our enemy BT behavior tree. Then I can just compile and save that. Then back in BP enemy, if we select BP enemy itself at the top of the component list, we should have under the pawn settings, what AI controller are you going to use? And that's going to be, of course, our enemy AIC. So select that, compile, save. And then, oh, we need to create one other asset. We need something called an enumeration or enum, if you prefer, which keeps track of what state is the enemy in at the moment. And our initial three states are going to be patrolling, chasing, searching. So right click, search for blueprints. Then in here you've got enumeration and just call that asset enemy state. So enumerations or enums, if you've never used them before, are a variable which can hold one of a specific set of values. Like you might create a new noom called days of the week, which can have the values Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. As an example, we've got one enemy state, which can have three values, which are going to be patrolling, searching, chasing. So we'll hit new and we'll change this first value to patrolling. Then hit new again and change this next value to chasing player. Then we'll hit new again and change this final value to searching for player. Okay, and we're good to go, almost. What we'll do first of all is just open the behavior tree and just make sure that if you click, that you're able to use the blackboard tab at the top here to switch between behavior tree and blackboard. If you can't do that, it might be that in your behavior tree, the blackboard asset is set to like nothing. Like I've just cleared mine here, so I can't click on this blackboard link at the top right. However, if you just click this drop down and select your enemy BB, you should now be able to happily switch between behavior tree and blackboard. All right, final thing then in this bit of setup, we need to create what's called a nav mesh. Now the way you do that in Unreal Engine, uh, first of all, what is a nav mesh? A nav mesh defines the area that an AI can walk around. Like so if you only want the AI walking on certain bits of a level, just put a nav mesh on those bits. We want a, um, an AI to be able to walk around all this, including up the stairs. So we're going to surround the whole thing in a nav mesh, a nav mesh bones volume, in much the same way that the whole thing is surrounded by these two other volumes here. We go to volumes, get some nav mesh bones volume, drop that sort of roughly in the middle, and then I'm just going to scale that. There we go, and just make sure that it covers the entire space in there. And if you want to preview what your nav mesh is doing, just hit P for preview, and you'll get this green preview, and it's saying, yeah, the AI can go up all these places. Now, despite the preview looking a bit janky here, it will go up the stairs, don't worry. It's just that the nav mesh preview is kind of intersecting the stairs model. I can hit P again just to get rid of that preview. And then, yeah, we're ready to start programming our AI. 
which is what we'll do in the next section.